students welcome to sunil's tutorial i'm sunil mirwani and today we'll be doing this uh, chapter called as term loan appraisal term loan and project appraisal let's see question number 1 now first let's read the data they said that the following data is available with respect to vijay textiles limited right They are saying that the company was incorporated in 1975 with the promoters having an experience of more than 35 years in the textile field and a brand leader in micro yarn. The company proposes to borrow a term loan under the technology upgradation fund scheme. The present installation capacity is 10 machines or 6,000 TPA or polyester textured yarn. Okay. Ah, uh, the additional investment will increase the install capacity by 36. 100 TPA. The present and the proposed setup is at Silvasa, a backward area, and enjoys a tax holiday of five years. Tax rate is 40%. ICICI, IDBI, and SBI finance the present unit. The project will result in economies of scale, reduce the cost of production, higher the production due to the yarn speed being faster. Ah, uh, due to the yarn speed being faster due to the latest. generation machines best quality due to the modernized machine the expected returns on investment is 18% depreciation for the project is 400 lakhs per year the cost of the proposed project is so and so uh the term uh, the term lending institution has an interest rate of 13% for similar risk project and the term loan is repayable in 5 years with with installment and interest repayable at the end of each year the general manager of the term lending institution has requested you to prepare a flash report first thing let's see how do we make a flash report right flash report first thing name of the borrower that this is a stereotype format okay name of the borrower Name of the borrower who is borrowing the money who wants the loan. Vijay Textiles Limited. Vijay Textiles Limited. Right. Next, term loan amount. Yeah. Term loan amount, guys. If you look at the means of finance, if you look at adjustment number. Then there they give you means of finance in which they said promoters funds additional equity share capital three hundred lakhs internal cash accruals five hundred lakhs term loan of twelve hundred lakhs you want a loan of twelve hundred lakhs right rate of interest how much is the rate of interest that the bank is going to charge you for that they give you an adjustment number eleven thirteen percent. So the first thing you have to write the name of the borrower, the term loan amount, and the rate of interest. Now, a flash report is made up of five points. The first point is financial feasibility. Right? What makes this company financially very sound, or why should the bank give this loan? Right? Read the adjustments. What are the USPs that will enable the company to earn more? Right. One, the company has an income tax holiday of five years. Tax rate is forty percent. If I don't have to pay forty percent, obviously my profitability will go up. So first is that the company has a tax holiday for five years. Second. What is the returns over investment? The returns over investment for the project is eighteen percent, right? If you see your rate of interest, rate of interest is thirteen percent. Returns on investment is eighteen percent. So at thirteen percent, also the company will make profit. C, the debt equity ratio. The debt equity ratio. Now see. You are taking a debt of look at your means of finance. You are taking a debt of twelve hundred lakhs, and the equity is going to be three hundred lakhs equity share capital. Internal cash accrual is five hundred, so that is eight hundred lakhs. So my debt equity ratio should be 
1.5 so in financial feasibility you have to write three things whenever you are doing flash report your financial feasibility will have three key points one tax holiday second returns on investment third the debt equity ratio right do you get this thing clear next the next point that you need to have in flash report is technical feasibility technical feasibility why is the loan being taken because the company proposes to borrow the loan under the scheme technology upgradation fund scheme the technology is going to be improved because of the loan so a the company proposes to borrow the term loan under the technology upgradation fund scheme what do you think how will the technology improve or how will the output improve because of the loan they are saying that there are two things that will happen at present my output is 6000 tpa which will increase by 3600 tpa moreover there will be higher production of yarn and uh, reduce cost of production and better quality so those are the things that will occur so i'll say that the expansion will result in the expansion will result in higher production best quality due to late, latest machine latest machines fine so that's my technical feasibility besides that what else is my technical feasibility the proposed expansion in which area is it taking place it is taking place in silvasa a backward area so the area where the expansion is taking place if it's a backward area the chances of you getting a loan are higher right so i can say that the proposed expansion is at silvasa a backward area three things why is the loan being borrowed why is the loan being borrowed second what will the expansion result in and third the area in which the expansion is taking place that's your technical feasibility next economic feasibility economic feasibility uh you are going to have they've said that there are going to be uh, the project will result in economies of scale and the production will increase one the installed capacity the installed capacity will increase from 6000 tpa it is going to increase by 3600 tpa so it will become 9600 tpa second the project will result in economies of scale project will result in economies of scale so one economic feasibility your installed capacity and economies of scale how will my cost go up, go down because of the project right fourth management competence so the reduce cost of production yes the economies of scale when i say it includes all those points management competence
right in the beginning the promoters have more than 35 years of experience in textile field right so i can say that the promoters in this you write about the promoters promoters have more than 35 years of experience Thirty-five years of experience in textile field, right? So in this, what you are going to write about management competences about the promoter, propose, uh, promoters, and the last is market appraisal. How do you make a market appraisal? Which are the financial companies which are already backing your project? We are saying that IDBI, ICICI, and SBI are already uh, backing your project. Besides that, in terms of market appraisal, they have also said that you are a brand leader in micro yarn. Right? Two things. Right? The opening paragraph says that you are a brand leader in micro yarn. Right? So, in terms of market. The company is a brand leader. Brand leader in micro yarn. And second, ICICI, IDBI, and SBI have financed the present. the present unit this is how you make a flash report here you talk about the brand and you talk about who has already financed the present project so these are the five things and these are the points that have to be included this particular report is called as flash report right so the first part of the question is prepare a flash report so we've done a flash report evaluate the project profitability for the next five years now the next thing that i'm going to do is I will make a loan amortization schedule. Right? The loan has to be repaid in five years. One, two, three, four, five. I have to repay the loan in five years. The principal amount. The loan that is taken is 1200 lakhs, right? Now, let's see this installment interest loan installment, right? Instead of this, we we'll call this as opening balance. I will make things very simple for us because then we'll be using the same HP schedule principal. Loan installment and closing balance. Right? Now, if I have to pay 1200 over a period of 5 years, that means how much should buy, uh, how much should be the amount that, that I should pay every year? Some of these divide 1200. 240. 240. So my principal amount is going to be 240. Everyone's understood how he got 240. He divided 1200 by 5 years. 1200 is the loan that I am taking. I am taking the loan for 5 years, therefore 1200 by 5 years. Right? Interest. What is the rate of interest given to you? 13%. On what will you calculate 13% on the opening balance? My opening balance is 1200. 156. So my installment will be principal plus interest. So that is going to be 396. My closing balance will be opening balance minus principal. So that means this is going to be 200 minus 240. That nice. is 960. Whatever is the closing balance of first year will be the opening balance of next year. The principal amount which has to be repaid is going to be the same. 240. Interest I will be paying on 960, 13% which will be nothing but 124.8. Right? 240 plus 124.8 is going to be 364.8 closing balance is opening balance minus principal that is 960 minus 240 which is going to be 720 right now 
what was the closing balance of second year will be the opening balance of third year the principal amount is 240 it remains the same on 720 i need 13% 93.6 93.6 so therefore my loan installment will be principal plus interest 240 plus 93.6 which comes to 3 333.6 333.6 3 right my closing balance will be 720 minus 240 Which is going to be 480, right? Fourth year, 480. This amount still remains 240. 62.4. 62.4. Uh, uh, 302.4. 302.4. Which comes to 240, right? 240 here. 240. 31.2. 31.2. So this is going to be loan installment sum of is 281.2 271.2 and this will be met. This is how you prepare a loan amortization schedule, right? So the second thing that you have to do is make a loan amortization schedule. Why did I do this? Because I want to make the project feasibility report, right? So to make project feasibility report, first thing that you have to do is make loan amortization schedule. Next. The next thing that you need to do is, they have said that you will have to make, they give you your returns on investment, right? So in that case, I can say that returns on investment, returns on investment is earning before interest and tax upon total assets into hundred. Returns on investment is given to you as eighty. EBIT is not given to you. Total investment. Please look at your schedule or uh, adjustment number nine. Your total investment is two thousand. Uh, two thousand is two thousand lakhs because eight hundred lakhs is the owner's fund and two hundred lakhs loan you are taking into hundred. So if I cross multiply, I will get eighteen into two thousand divided by hundred. Is going to be my EBIT. So my EBIT is going to be 360. Once I know EBIT, then I can make a revenue statement. That's my uh, what they had asked you to make. They had asked you to make this uh, project feasibility for the next five years, right? So let's make the revenue statement. Now we know our Schedule by heart. EBIT less interest gives you EBT less tax gives you EAT, right? Now for five years I have to make one, two, three, four, five. EBIT is going to be same for all five years. Three sixty, three sixty, three sixty, three sixty. Interest. Interest I will take from my loan amortization schedule. Interest I'm going to take from my loan amortization schedule. These five interests I'm going to record there. So that's going to be your 156, uh, 124.8. Then you have 93.6. Then 62.4. And then you have 31.2. So you will get your EBT. Right, when you subtract this, this will be say 204. This is 235.2, 266.4, 297.6, and 328. Now tax is at the rate of 40 percent. But you do you remember that you had you had five years tax holiday. So for the first five years, I'm not paying any tax. I have a tax holiday in spite of tax rate being 40 percent. So this figure will come down here as it is. This is going to be. Someone cross check this figure, guys. 360 minus 156. 194. minus 156. Cross check that once again. 360. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Should be 200. Not 200. The last one is wrong. Last one. Someone check this, please. Uh, you have 360 minus 31.2. 328.8. Point eight. Okay. Just check the other figures also. 
Once you have this, then I can find out my debt service coverage ratio. DSCR, debt service coverage ratio, right? So in that case, how do I get my debt service coverage ratio? That formula I write separately. Debt service coverage ratio is given by the formula EBIT plus depreciation minus tax upon interest plus install principal that's your yeah principal right now let's calculate the debt service coverage ratio for five years so debt service coverage ratio right for the first year is going to be EBIT, my EBIT for the first year is 360 plus they're saying that depreciation is they give you the depreciation depreciation for the project is 400 lakhs every year so depreciation is given to you as 400 there was no tax interest plus principal is nothing but the installment amount so straight away guys from my loan amortization schedule, I can write the installment amount there, 396. So this should be for 760 upon 396. How much is that? 1.9191 recurring. 1.91 recurring. I've shown you for the first year. Similarly, you should be able to calculate for the subsequent years. So this is 1.91. Similarly, when you calculate for subsequent years, this is going to be nothing but 2.08. This should be 2.28, this is 2.51, and this is 2.80. Once I have debt service coverage ratio, then I have to find out the overall debt service coverage ratio of the project. The overall debt service coverage ratio of the project. We found out for individual years will be nothing but the average of all the individual years. So that means this is going to be 1.91 plus 1.292, 2.08, 2.28, 2.51 plus 2.8 divided by 5. Someone please help me get this. Should be 2.31. Eight, right? Thanks. So my debt service coverage coverage ratio is uh, 2.318 times. That's how you make a flash report. Had they asked you only for flash report, you would have stopped there. They've asked you for profitability, so we made the profitability, and they would ask you for debt debt service coverage ratio. We have also found out the debt service coverage ratio. Three things were asked, all three are found out. Right? Next, let's see another some guys. Let's see the second sum, guys. You are approached by a financial institution to appraise the following project. Name of the borrower, you're doing the second sum, guys, uh, is Anju Devi Chemical Private Limited. Proposed loan is taken to set up a chemical unit for proposing industrial for processing industrial waste into marketable products XYZ. The product has a demand of 50,000 liters. The processing cost includes variable cost of 5 rupees per litre and fixed cost of 30,000 rupees per year. Advertising expenses are expected to be 20,000 per year. XYZ can be sold at 10 rupees per litre. Raw material is available at 1 rupee per litre. The capital cost of the chemical unit is 7,50,000 rupees. The company has applied for a loan of 60 lakh rupees. No, 6 lakhs. 6 lakh rupees. The capital cost is 7 lakh 50 thousand. 6 lakh rupees for a term of 10 years. That is over the life of the asset. The promoters of the company are young, dynamic, highly qualified people who are doing the venture for the first time. The promoters are unable to provide any collateral security for the loan. 
accept personal guarantee of their parents. They have thought of this project after market research. The said research has stated. The said research has stated in the risk factor about invasion of Malaysia, a chemical market, and drastic reduction in selling price of similar product. The above unit is an SSI unit, and its average tax rate is 20 percent, interest rate is 12 percent. Loan is repayable in 10 annual installments along with interest at the end of each year. You are required uh, to give the cash flow generated by the above project in the first three years, the debt service coverage ratio for three years, and flash report presenting the above information in financial institution. Let's first take the flash report. We are doing for Anju. Devi Chemicals Private Limited. Right? Flash report. First thing, you need to write the name of the borrower. <laughs> name of borrower is Anju Devi Chemicals Private Limited. Right next, term loan amount. Is 6 lakhs. Right? Rate of interest. Rate of interest is going to be 12% per annum. So that's my opening paragraph. Now, let's start with the various things that you have in this. First, financial feasibility. Let's start with financial feasibility. Now, in financial feasibility, one of the negative points that you have is that the promoters are unable to provide any collateral security except personal guarantee of parents. So the first thing that you have in financial feasibility, if the bank is giving you a loan, what are the risks that the bank is taking? One, they don't get any collateral securities. So I can say promoters are unable. So, so in the flash report, you have to write the risks also. If yes, so the risks. Necessary no, 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 no. The bank needs to know properly should it give a loan or no. So promoters are unable to provide provide any collateral collateral security except personal guarantee of parents right next now, what are the good points about it? One, the above unit is a SS, SSI unit and will have a tax holiday, average tax rate of only 20%. Right? Unit is an SSI unit and will enjoy lower tax rate of 20% right next the debt equity ratio debt equity ratio now these guys are taking a loan of 6 lakhs and their total project cost is 7 lakh 50 thousand that means they are taking a loan of 6 lakhs and they are investing 1 lakh 50 thousand of their own so my debt equity ratio is 4, 4 times, right? That's my financial feasibility. Next, technical feasibility. Let's see the technical feasibility. Under technical feasibility, uh, where am I, what is so unique about this project? I'm going to be using industrial waste. That is the only unique thing. So, 
and that was the industrial waste can be converted into marketable product. So the technical feasibility, technically, what is new about the project? The proposed loan. is taken up, taken to set up a chemical unit for processing, processing industrial waste into marketable product. X, Y, Z. So that's the technical feasibility of all the project. Right? Third, economic feasibility. What is the economic feasibility of the project? Right? What is the project going to do? Economically, uh, they are saying that the product has a demand of 50,000 meter. So that's the economic feasibility. That, that means the product is definitely going to sell because there's a huge demand for it in the market. No product has a demand of 50,000 units, units per meters. Next. Fourth, management competence. In terms of management competence, the promoters of the company. The promoters of the company are the promoters of the company are young, dynamic, highly qualified, doing the venture for the first time. So the promoters of the company of the company are young, dynamic and highly qualified but doing the venture for the first time. Now, why is the project being undertaken? It's being undertaken after doing market research. And what is the downside to the project? Invasion from Malaysia that could drastically reduce the selling price. I can say that the research. Yeah, promoters have undertaken the project and undertaken the project after doing market research Second Risk factor, research states, uh, states that the risk factor is about invasion of Malaysia. drastically reducing the selling price. <coughs> so that's my flash report. Five things of my flash report. Next. 
let's start with my loan amortization schedule. Loan amortization schedule. Right? They've asked me, although it's for 10 years, they've asked me to do only for the first three years. We do for the first year. Yeah, we do only for the first three years. Your opening balance, principal, interest, installment, closing balance. Right? I'm taking a loan of 6 lakhs. Right? I'm taking a loan of 6 lakhs for 10 years, so my principal amount is going to be 60,000. Right? Interest. Interest they have said is at the rate of 12%. Now, 12% on 6 lakhs is going to be 72,000. So this is going to be 6 lakhs, 72,000. So my closing balance is opening balance minus principal, so which will be 5 lakh, 40,000. Whatever the closing balance of the first year will be the opening balance for second year. 5 lakh 40 thousand. Principal amount is still 60 thousand. Right? Now, interest 12% on 5 lakh 40 thousand is going to be 64,800. Right? So in that case, this is going to be, this is not 6 lakh 72 thousand, 60 plus 72, this should be 1 lakh 32 thousand, right, 60 thousand plus 64 thousand is going to be 1 lakh 24 thousand 800, 540 minus 60 is 480, 4 lakh 80 thousand, 60,000, 12% on 60,000 is going to be 57,600, 60,000 plus 57,600 should give you 1,17,600 and 480 minus 60 is 420, so that's my loan amortization for 3 years. Now, let's make the revenue statement. Uh, here the returns on investment is not given, so you will have to first calculate the EBIT. How do I do that? This is sales less variable cost should give me contribution less fixed cost should give me my EBIT less interest will give you EBIT less tax will give you your EAT, right? Now, they said that the demand is 50,000 units and the selling price per unit is given to you as uh, 10 rupees. The demand is 50,000 units and the selling price per unit is 10 rupees. That means the sales is going to be 50,000 into 10, that's 5 lakhs, first year, second year, third year. 5 lakhs and 5 lakhs, right? Now, amongst the variable costs, they have said that uh, the raw material is available at 1 rupee per liter and raw material is available at 1 rupee per liter. You are going to be selling 50,000 units, so 1 rupee per liter that means 50,000 rupees. 50,000 rupees and 50,000 rupees. Any other variable cost they have given you? Let's see the sum. They have said that there is a processing cost which includes a variable cost of 5 rupees per liter. So, you have other variable cost of 5 rupees per liter. 5 rupees per liter on 50,000 liters is going to be nothing but 2,50,000. So 
So my contribution will now be 5 lakhs minus 3 lakhs. That's 2 lakhs. Same 2 lakhs and 2 lakhs. Fixed cost. The fixed cost they have given you is other fixed cost is other fixed cost is given to you as 30,000. And advertisement is given to you as 20,000. Besides that, have they given you any other fixed cost? Those are the only two fixed costs that they have given you. Right? Now, we also have depreciation. Yeah, every year they are in incurring that. Besides that, you have depreciation. Now, the capital cost of the project, guys. The capital cost of the project is 7,50,000 and it is to be written off over a period of 10 years, right? 7,50,000 written off over a period of 10 years, that means 75,000 each year. So I'm going to have a depreciation of 75,000 each year. That will give me my EBIT. I have 2 lakhs minus 30 minus 20, 50 and minus 75. So that should give me 75. 1 lakh 50 minus 75 is 75. So it's going to be same for 3 years. 75,000. 75,000. Right? Interest. I'm going to take interest from my loan amortization schedule. Interest I'm going to take from my loan amortization schedule. So that is going to be 72,000, 64,800 and 57,600. That will give you 3,000 and 75,000. So that means this should give you 10,200. And last, 75,000 minus 57,600 should give you 17,400. Tax rate is 20%. Right, 20% on 3,000 will be 600. 20% on 10,200 is going to be 2040, and 20% on 17,400 should be 3480. So my earning after tax is going to be nothing but 2,400. Here it is going to be nothing but 8,160 and here it is going to be 13,920. But they haven't asked me for earning after tax. They've asked me for cash flow. Right? Now, how do you get cash flow? Earning after tax plus depreciation. Depreciation was 75,000. Earning after tax plus depreciation gives you cash flow. We've learned this in capital budgeting. So that is 77,400. This is going to be 83,160 and 75. So this is going to be 88,920. So my cash flow from the project in the three years is going to be 77,400. 83,160 and 88,920. Right? Now, I need to find out my debt service coverage ratio. Right? I need to find out this was loan amortization, revenue statement we done, loan amortization we done. The next thing I need to find out is my debt service coverage ratio. Debt service coverage ratio. Right? Debt service coverage ratio, as I explained to you, is given by the formula EBIT plus depreciation minus tax, that means cash and flow minus tax upon interest plus principal. So for the first year, for the first installment or interest? You in principal plus interest gives you installment. So although we write here as interest plus principal, but we directly take the installment figure from the loan loan or amortization scheme. So EBIT, EBIT is uh, EBIT is seventy five thousand. 
plus depreciation. Depreciation is 75,000 minus tax 600 upon in interest plus principal is nothing but installment from the lane or amortization schedule. This is 1 lakh 32,000. Right, similarly for the second year, this is going to be EBIT is 75,000. Depreciation is 75,000 and uh, tax rate is 2040 divided by installment is 1,24,800 and for the final year EBIT is 75,000 interest sorry depreciation is 75,000 and tax is 3480 and for my loan amortization this is 117600 so I'm giving you for the three years for the first year is 1.13 1.13 1.13 1 for the second year 1.18 and for the final year One point. One point. One point two five. Right. So in this particular sum, I cannot find out my average debt service coverage ratio because I'm no, not because of that. Because I haven't done for all ten years. For average debt service coverage ratio, I should have done for all ten years. I've done only for three years. That's the reason I cannot find this. Right. We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.